My dear Baggins is and buffing. <laughs> okay. Wow, he is literally me. Oh, dear uh... God. <laughs> How he is <laughs> so all these guys. The Joker is that the is that Brad Pitt from Fight Club? Yep. Um. Then you got Christian Bale from Psycho. Okay, yeah. And then Elon Musk, and then DiCaprio, and Wolf of Wall Street, and who's that? That's not so, Channing Tatum, is it? No, I believe. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe it is. I thought. I mean, it's really. No, nah, I don't. I think it's. Don't... I think it's Ryan Gosling in a movie called Drive. This is a really uh, weird movie with no dialogue where he plays a guy who can drive really well. <laughs> so you have the nerdy guys saying he's, he's, all, he's these, all these guys, these guys who are and... somewhat villains, some of them. And some of them are straight up villains. And then some of them are just not great people. <laughs> and, and then the the ripped Chad guy. Wow, he's literally me, and he's looking at. Uh, I think that's that'd be Bilbo. I think so. I have no idea because I can't tell with these drawings. For all I know, it could be Sam. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe it is Bilbo. Yeah. So do you do you understand what this is? So this is a really strange one that uh, maybe needs a bit more dissecting. But the idea that I understand it is that like it's people cool who to are... be Bilbo. Yeah, so so Hobbit life is the is from according to Tolkien and according to a lot of us who now watch and who have read the books, the Hobbits live in a really uh, nice established existence in harmony with both nature, but also like no external factors from the outside world that affect them too much, and so they just sort of like to like live and and talk to each other and and have parties have have festivals and like nothing really negative happens within their life and um they kind of get to do whatever they want for the most part so uh, the unenli- the unenlightened dorky guy looks up to these uh these false role models yeah because uh, again but, but these guys the... kind of do that too right so the idea would be that oh you know elon musk can do whatever he wants uh wolf of wall street he's rich he can do whatever he wants the guy in drive he's really cool he got rich because he was basically a getaway driver for a bunch of people he can do whatever he wants and obviously brad pitt is like supposed to be the epitome of dude like that's why yeah. he he's a manifestation like that that's the why Joker they got one's brad a weird and... one but the that's Joker why they got really brad pitt to play that guy exactly exactly <laughs> um so yeah i think the idea is like the people who think this way, they're clearly not thinking about it long term because none of these guys, Elon Musk is the exception because he's still alive and is a real person. But the rest of them, they don't actually have a great existence in world, let alone in real like in real life if they were real. But even in their own world, like the Joker. The Joker doesn't have a great existence at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> Brad Pitt just... is a figment of someone's imagination in this movie. Yeah. Christian Bale is a serial killer. There's, some, there's <laughs> something wrong with you for looking up to Christian Bale in that movie. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street, I get, but he's also a thief and just unethical. Like, he's a horrible human. Yeah. The only yeah. one that I actually disagree with, now, obviously, Elon Musk is one. I'm not going to, I'm going to cut that one at, like out of my description here because I don't really understand the idea here other than people do look up to Elon Musk and maybe sometimes they shouldn't. But mm-hmm. sometimes maybe they should. He's done some okay stuff. But really, the the one that's interesting me is the one with uh, Ryan Gosling in Drive, if that is who it is. Because his character is not evil, but not good. They're just, they have a skill set and they like driving. That's sort of what I gathered from that movie. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but it, there's no dialogue. So it's really hard to <laughs> find out mm-hmm. anything deeper within that film. Um Whereas the Hobbits, we do get a lot of the Hobbit life, and I, that's why I've actually praised the intro to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogy, because I think it's important to establish um, how how awesome the the Hobbits do have it, and what it means when Frodo has to leave that all behind and go on this crazy, dangerous adventure. Right, but I would, okay, but I want to go. I I we're really we're really digging into this. Let's do it. But, but, okay, let's just summarize these six guys. We'll just say they're 
the captains of industry. They're captains of industry. All right. Uh, and then Chad at the bottom is a captain of industry as well. So dorky, nerdy, basically it's saying dorky, nerdy guy wants to be Chad. And Chad wants to be a hobbit. So dorky, nerdy guy is looking up to the wrong people. You should yeah. just want to be a hobbit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know that's exactly right, and I and I think it's it's similar to when a young kid reads Lord of the Rings or watches the original trilogy, and you want to be, I don't know, Aragorn, Gimli, Legolas, Boromir, maybe Faramir even, um, mm-hmm. and yet all of them have to go through such hardships to fight all these battles, and maybe they do get glory in the end, sure, but if that if that's all that you're looking for, then, you know, maybe the idea is like you should reconsider what is of value to you because at the end of the day, one of the, one of the things I always find funny is when you go back, like it, when in the, in the books, when you go back to the Shire and when, when you go back to Bree, nobody knows what happened. Nobody like they don't care. Yeah. Like the, 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 that the, Strider guy, a Strider guy, he's the king. <laughs> that hobo that used to come in and bum beers off of me is the king of this place. <laughs> and and like the hobbits, they don't care. Like not like they they're interested when the elves come through and and have some stories to tell. But other than the fact that goblins and and sometimes evil humans were coming through um during the battle like they would have rather like other outside of that they don't know what happened with the you know the battle at helm's deep they don't know what happened in Minas Tirith. like they don't know any of that until you tell them the story and Mm -hmm. so the idea is like without all that other crazy stuff happening it just just being in their own world they were happy they were happy in their existence they had friends to talk to they could just kind of have parties hang out tell each other stories um you know, show each other their creative work. So the uh, hobbits were very fond of storytelling and singing and dancing and, and all this stuff. So really that was their entire existence was they would do their work during the day that would, that was in, in line with nature around them. So it, it didn't disturb their environment. And then at night they would hang out with each other and have feasts and all this. And like that, the idea is like, that's the epitome of human culture or, or any culture and outside mm-hmm. of that it's a bunch of war and and harm and and you know and so anyone who's thinking deeper about these things wants to get away from war and wants to get away from all that uh, what would what people would consider glory um and it's it's one thing that i think uh is maybe the wrong message that is in lord of the rings and obviously this is in a meme video we're getting really deep down the rabbit hole but I know Tolkien was trying to establish the hobbits as a great life, but then he also goes a long way to establish the great deeds of Merry, Pippin, Sam, and Frodo, and how they now need to be looked up to inside the Shire, as if their deeds that they did out on the battlefield somehow make them good at leading Shire folk in their day-to-day life and to me that doesn't actually hold true i do think they were great people and, and, and great hobbits and would be good leaders of their of their society but i don't think it was because of their battlefield prowess or or the fact that one was a knight of gondor and one was a rider of rohan like i don't think that that is why they are good hobbit leaders i think they're they were already had great disposition to be these leaders sam just needed his to be teased out a bit from his adventure but the rest of them are already to me established um as yeah w- who would be good at at these roles i mean mary and pippin were already mischievous in a way that was meant to like they were trying to better people's lives to some degree obviously the movies have a bit of a weird thing where they're in farmer maggot's crops um that doesn't right, happen they, in the books. They, they not completely like that changed books. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the fact that they wanted to get like, you know, the biggest fireworks for everyone, they wanted to put on a good show. Um they they weren't they weren't villainous um in, in the way that they were mischievous. They were in it to better people's lives, and that's ultimately kind of what you want in your leader of your town, I guess. And and Frodo he was always very 
nice to his friends and nice nice to people around him. He he wasn't ever, um, at least not from what I gathered in the books, he was never kind of self-centered and uh, egotistical because he was handed all this money and, and good fortune. He mm-hmm. did actually go out of his way to um, kind of share the wealth with his friends and just random hobbits and stuff, like just giving stuff away. And this is a big part of hobbit culture is, is giving gifts to people. So um, t- to me, you know, I think it does a good job of setting all that up. And I just wish that they, they that Tolkien had tweaked the ending a bit to reinforce that it wasn't their deeds on the battlefield that are why we should look up to these hobbits. It's because of who they are as people outside of that. If they had never been on the battlefield, I would still think that they were great hobbits to have leading the Shire going forth. So Mm -hmm. that's my only little tidbit there. It's a weird rabbit hole to go down. Um, But yeah, I I actually think this is an interesting meme and uh, one I'm glad to see the, the Lord of the Rings fan base kind of really um get a get a hold of because i think it's important that we showcase that we do understand the the deeper the deeper meanings behind the hobbit lifestyle and why it is such a big part of tolkien's work and and what he was trying to say with it i regret to announce this is the end i bid you all a very fond farewell <laughs> 